Uh, aloha kako. Um, so glad to have all of you with us today. Um, so this webinar is really just about, you know, hearing from people's experiences. And um, I wanted to just invite a, you know, a host of people to talk about, you know, themselves, why they got into conservation, their thoughts about it, and just any other kind of more big picture things that uh, they want to share. So um, I, basically the way this is going to go is I'm just going to ask um, each panelist about five questions. And then um, at the end, if you guys have any questions or things you wanted to ask them specifically or just general questions, you can put it in the Q&A and um, we'll take about 10 minutes or so to talk about that. So um, I am going to start off with Okua Oka'ale. Um, and so starting off, uh, my first question is just for you to introduce yourself, um, your name, age, where you work, uh, your favorite native plant or animal, whichever one you prefer, and um, just a fun fact about yourself. Yeah, thank you. Um, my name is Hokua Oka'ale Gelman, or Hokua. I'm 19 years old and I work for the Maui Forest Bird Recovery Project as a Kupu Aina Corpse um, on their native forest bird crew or the honey creeper crew. Um, and I can't, it's hard for me to choose what my favorite plant is. I'm really obsessed with all the lobeliads, so cyanias, claremontias, um, lobelias, delicias, and on. So it's hard for me to choose, but... Um, also, on the other side, I really like the fluffy baby ua ukani. So, yeah, but in general, I, I can't pick a favorite <laughs> plant or animal. That's but, okay. Yeah. I have multiple, too. So, um, And you have a fun fact about yourself you want to share? Oh, here's a fun fact. I actually just won Miss Hawaii um, Teen USA, so that's fun. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Um, and so the next question is, why or how did you get into conservation? And um, tell us what you like about it. Yeah, so I actually graduated from Kulakaya Puni, so uh, the Hawaiian Immersion Programs. I went from Punana Leo um, preschool all the way through 12th grade. Um, so I've always been kind of immersed in the culture as a whole and have had this like connection and sense of responsibility to take care of the aina and also like research all things hawaii so um yeah i've always felt this this connection to the aina and then um my boyfriend actually ended up getting really interested in conservation work and found some opportunities for us to to get some experience and so we started volunteering with the oahi forest restoration project here on maui um, on the leeward slopes of Haleakala and through uh, going and volunteering with the Oahi Forest um, Restoration Project multiple times, we kind of got this hunger and motivation to pursue careers in conservation. So my boyfriend ended up volunteering with the Maui Forest Bird Recovery Project, who I currently work with. Um, and he went on a trip and I was just like really jealous and I was like, what the <laughs> heck? Like, I want to go fly in helicopters and go camp in uh, the Nahelehele. So um, I basically begged my boss for a job. <laughs> I, was, I was a senior in high school and I was like, please, like anything, I'll do anything. I was trying to get a job right then and there. And she was like, we don't have, you can't do that. Like, it's a full time job. So I waited <laughs> sure. um, and then they ended up. Um, getting an exception for, like to have a kupu and so now I'm their kupu Aina Corps member so yeah that's pretty awesome and um, like I said I I really love flying in helicopters obviously that's super fun that's a nice perk um, but just being in the forest like the pristine forest here on Maui and camping and hiking around and searching for endemic and endangered plants obviously, as well as the honey creepers, because that's my job. Um, all of those things are really fulfilling and motivating um, as a conservationist. Cool. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, 
Yeah, I, the Oahu Forest Project sounds really awesome. I've heard of them. I, I've never been on a trip with them, but that's on my my to do list at some point for sure. Yeah. Um. So I guess like on the flip side of that, what what are some of the things that you find more difficult about conservation or or drawbacks? Yeah, it's interesting because the organization that I work with, um, we're working with the honey creepers. And so they have a certain breeding season and we are currently in that breeding season. And so it, there's kind of a drawback for when we're allowed to do certain things, when we're allowed to handle birds and, and do other things within our project. Um, so we have a lot of seasonal hires and they end up being people from the mainland because they have experience handling however many birds um, mm -hmm. and obviously because here in Hawaii most things are endangered we don't get as much experience handling these these plants and animals and so um, we aren't really given the same opportunities as quickly because we don't have that like number experience and so as I said a lot of people come here from the mainland on these temporary positions and and take these positions um, but it's unfortunate like being a Hawaiian person and and not being able to do what you would like to do to the fullest extent to help these um, these animals. Because I don't want to leave Hawaii to go get bird handling experience so I can help these birds. Like I'm trying to stay in Hawaii to protect Hawaii for Hawaii. Like there's, mm -hmm. I have no t there's no time to go away so you can get this experience because these birds are dying at a rapid rate. So for me, that's my biggest... Um, like difficulty and, and issue um I'm really appreciative that people outside of Hawaii care enough to want to come here and help us but uh we really need more opportunities for Hawaiian people to be able to um, be in these positions and and maybe without a degree or without all of this bird handling experience um we just mm -hmm. need more more funding as well for for locals without degrees and and just to, to have these positions, because obviously we're in this housing crisis and nobody can afford rent or anything. So just having more funding for people to pursue these careers will, in the end, like help us all in, in many different aspects. So that's definitely something that I struggle with. And also, um, like being in the field and it pouring rain all the time and being <laughs> soaking wet and cold is pretty nuts so like you're sitting there for yeah you're sitting there for hours like waiting for these kvq to come and you're soaking wet but you also have to be quiet so you don't disturb them and so that's definitely hard for um, sure so it sounds like it would be good if there were maybe some more ex like ways for people to get bird handling experience like in hawaii like in the state too yeah 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 just to involve more locals yeah mm -hmm. for sure um so I guess that's a good lead-in for the next question um are there any good programs you can share with us that you know that help youth could be financial loan forgiveness um educational groups that involve k through 12 yeah so um I am biased because I am both of these things I am a Hawaiian immersion graduate as well as a kupu and I think those are both perfect opportunities for people to be more immersed in the culture as a whole and and have this motivation and passion to pursue careers in conservation but also kupu gives you the perfect opportunity to pursue a career in conservation straight out of high school like I did I like I said I didn't want to go away and do all the studying and stuff degrees are very important and I'm definitely going to have to get one so I can get a higher position in conservation but I was so eager to jump right into the field and kupu is this perfect opportunity to do exactly that cool cool that's great um and then you know I feel like you kind of touched on this a little bit already but um the last question is what do you think needs to change in the systems that run conservation for it to be sustainable for youth in the future what's not working, what's working well, and what would you like to see more of? Yeah, yeah, and exactly like you said, I did touch on it before, but um, yeah, I just really want to see more Hawaiian people taking action to take care of our ancestors because the land is our ancestor as well as all of the things that encompass it. So um, yeah, it's just really hard working in a space where people don't 100% understand exactly how you feel about things 
Um, like I'm the only Hawaiian person in my organization. I'm also the youngest one who have, who has ever been accepted to work there. And so I'm just put in this interesting situation where, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm appreciative of people helping, but also like, I need more people to take action so we can take control of this. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, as I said before, more funding for local people, more opportunities that don't require a degree. Um, I mean, yeah, that's pretty much it. Yeah, awesome. Well, mahalo for your manao. You were very well spoken and really appreciate you having you on today. <laughs> awesome. Um, so I'm gonna go to the next person, Genviev. Hi, Genviev. Hi. Um, so starting off, introduce yourself, name, age, where you work favorite native plant, animal, and a fun fact about yourself. All right. Uh, my name is Genevieve Blanchet. I'm 34. I work with the Snail Extinction Prevention Program. I'm the lab manager for the program. Um, it's hard to say which plant or animal are my favorite, but I'm always drawn to the opihi at the beach I love them on their different species and shape and sizes I think they're pretty neat um fun f fun fact about myself mm, that's a hard question uh, I think I can fall asleep anywhere <laughs> that's a good <laughs> I can, one I can nap anywhere yeah yeah that's a good skill to have I'm not like that so I envy that about you for sure um so why and how did you get into conservation and what do you like about it yeah um I think my background and life thought was not linear at all um I think I was always exposed to wildlife or live um nature through my family my grandparents my grandmother was really big on always pointing out what's what's around you and how everything is connected. And I think over the years, I just realized once in, I was in college that the classes I really enjoyed were about wildlife and conservation. And then I just took the opportunities that came to me. Um, I came to do my master here in, Ho in Hawaii at Uichilo. And then just things kind of came to me because I had the right experience and I was there at the right time. And that's how I ended um, with the Snail Extinction Prevention Program. Um, I'm really grateful that I'm able to have an impact um, now on Hawaiian wildlife. Um, things are really dire and within only a year, you can have an impact on the land, on the animal, on extinction. So I think that's what I like about the work is that in a really short time, you can make a difference. For sure. Um, and yeah. so what are some of the things that are more difficult or drawbacks? Um, I think Hoku touched on a lot of good points. Um, money is often a difficulty like I I think one of the things that comes back a lot within my team or throughout the years that I've observed is that young conservationists need a support system to be able to make it in conservation it can either be like from living at home with their family or having money to help them get uh, experience with these like internships that are not paying you enough. Um, so I think it's kind of excluding a lot of people that can afford to get unpaid or low paying internships. Mm -hmm. And um, it can be difficult for a lot of people to make it sometimes. Um, yeah, I think that's the main one. Yeah, I, I definitely agree, especially with the sentiment that if you can't afford it you really can't do it and so that's something i think really needs to change yeah. um 
So what, what areas do you believe there's a lot of misinformation surrounding conservation? Um, I had to ask my team what they thought about <laughs> that question. Okay, for and sure. I think what what came from my discussions with them was that I think the general public um, doesn't always see that everything is interconnected. So we work with small invertebrates. And so people see us working with very small invertebrates that might not seem important, but we're not just working on saving snails for us. We're working on saving the ecosystem. And um, I think it's hard for people sometimes to understand that everything is interconnected and the water that you drink in your house comes from our ecosystem, from our forests. And I think um, our coworker Kea, he said it really good in um, one of the movie that was presented last year at HCC. He said, um, "How are you gonna take care of the big stuff if you don't know how to take care of the small stuff?" So I think it it's really hard to sometimes to like show people how our little actions can impact a lot of things down the road. Um, and also, um, same with invasive species. I think people don't understand always that, you know, a small ant can have catastrophic consequences down the road. It's not because it's small that it's insignificant. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's, that's a really good answer to that. Thank you for that. Um, and then the last uh, question would be, is there any advice you would give to your former self or someone looking to get involved in conservation in Hawaii? Yeah, I think I might take a different angle than most people, but I think I think in the last couple of years, um, I've realized that burnout is pretty common in conservation in Hawaii. So when you feel when you're feeling burnout and you're telling yourself, wow, like I'm so tired, like I feel like I'm burning out, um, you're already burning out. So you just gotta take care of yourself. If you're not able to take care of yourself, how are you gonna take care of the Aina? How are you gonna take care of the species you care for? Um, so just keep yourself in check. Um, I think it's important to be open and talk about it in conservation or as a manager or leader to try to, you know, not always act tough and um, just be a little bit more sensitive about mental health and burnout. Yeah. Yeah, no, I totally agree with being real about how you're feeling and creating a safe space for people to be able to do that too and yeah. feel like yeah. they can say honestly like you know how they're doing is super important so awesome mahalo Chenviev. um yeah. appreciate all that wisdom that you have and um so the next person would be sarah hi sarah um so uh, bye. <laughs> uh, starting off yeah just same thing, introduce yourself, name, age, where you work, um, what's your favorite native plant animal, and fun fact. Yeah, so um, I'm Sarah Tom. I'm um, 25 years old. I work for the Division of Aquatic Resources. I'm the Ballast Water and Biofouling Bio Planning Associate on the Aquatic Invasive Species Team. Um, my favorite at our native animal would be I love seahorses and there's actually a native Hawaiian the Hawaiian smooth seahorse so that would probably be my favorite um and then fun fact is I like to travel and so I've been to 18 different countries besides like the United States wow that's yeah that's mm -hmm. awesome that's an impressive list um can you tell us a little bit more about like what biofouling and ballast water is just in yeah. case you don't know. Yeah, so ballast water is 
So it's all from like cargo ships a lot of times. It's when cargo ships, um, it's like the water used on cargo ships to compensate for the unloaded weight. So as cargo puts on, gets loaded on ships, it releases ballast water because it has that weight added. And then as um, it takes off that the cargo, it sucks in water. So then that water gets transported to different places and it could transport different aquatic invasive species. And then biofouling is like all the organisms that's like underneath vessel hulls. So that okay. could also transport aquatic invasive species too. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I just learned about this this year, so that's why I like my knowledge about aquatics is is lacking. So I figured <laughs> it's good to elaborate. Um. So yeah, why and how did you get into conservation, and what do you like about it? Yeah. So I actually grew up here in Hawaii. Um. And so I learned to love like the ocean and land pretty early on. Just like spending my weekends outdoors, swimming, surfing, hiking, whatever. Um, my family also comes from Lo'i farmers, so always just outdoors, too. Um, and then I, in high school, um, I actually attended a week-long marine biology program in Coconut Island at HIMB. And then it kind of gave me, like, insight into, like, marine science and taught me a lot of things. And through that, it really inspired me to pursue a career in marine science. Um, and so I really recommend that program if anyone's interested. Um, and then I went to college in Oregon State. I graduated um, during COVID. And so job opportunities were kind of like lacking at that time. So I joined a KUPU, the Conservation Leadership Development Program. Um, and through them, I was put into the host site of um, where I'm at now, a division of aquatic resources. And that's kind of how I like started my career. Um, something I like about it is that, I mean, I just like being outdoors all the time. Um, I love a job that lets you go out in the water and snorkel and dive. And then what I like about my job too, is that you get to do a little bit of everything. It's not like you're out in the field all the time. It's like a little, it's a really good mix of office work and field work. So nice, yeah. nice. Yeah. So you are you kind of like 50 50 with your your weeks? Yeah. Cool. Do you do you do scuba stuff? Yeah, we do a lot of scuba, um, a lot of like coral monitorings. And then we also do snorkel urchin out plants. So not part of my team, but there's another team that grows native collector urchins. And then we'll snorkel and outplant them on invasive algae. Awesome. Awesome. That's super cool. Um, so what are some of the things that are more difficult about it or drawbacks? Um, some of one of the drawbacks in contrib conservation in general, and then also my job included, is um there's so much to do with not that much like resources. Um, like we have a team of two for the just the ballast water side there's yeah there's two people on our wow. team doing all the ballast water biofouling work for Hawaii um so we like look at other states like California because we work a lot with them or Washington and they're like constantly producing like ballast water projects like papers doing a lot of work um and it just, we just don't have the capacity to do the same. There's not enough resources or funding. And I mean, we're a team of two, so we do as much as we can. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, that sounds tough. I I feel your pain. <laughs> it's always hard. Um, so how do you think conservation has changed for our generation? Uh, so like millennials, Gen Z, um have problems changed and has the way that we solve problems changed yeah so um something i feel like is that's different now than it was before is that jobs in conservation has become a lot more competitive than it was in the past nowadays you need a higher degree you have to like basically you, you have to go to college to get like to get an opportunity for, 
this type of opportunity. Um, a lot of times, even in entry level jobs, you're competing with people with master's degrees. Um, so you either really need a master's degree or have like a lot of experience, but it's really hard to get experience for like the entry level jobs are to get experience. So it's like, it's kind of hard that way. So like something I recommend is for you, if there's any like younger people on this to like do as much like internships and volunteer work early on while you're in college before applying to these jobs. Cause yeah, it is really hard. Um, it's pretty competitive and then also network like people who, who like networking with people is like pretty important too. Yeah, I would say that's all really solid advice. And I think, yeah, a lot of the entry level jobs kind of require like a year or so of experience. And that's hard to get if you're not, you're not already working. So, yeah, <laughs> so, yeah definitely. Thank you for that. Um, and then what do you think uh, the future of conservation in Hawaii looks like? What issues do you think will be the most pressing and how will we adapt? Mm -hmm. Um. So... Um, in my job, like issues that are pressing in my job right now is um, stony coral tissue loss. So it's not present right now in Hawaii, but it is um, devastating a lot of the reefs over in the Caribbean. Um, it's said to be like one of the most lethal coral diseases. Um, and so basically our team right now is working to try to just prevent it from coming. And it's said to possibly become, be coming through like ballast water and biofouling. Um, so that's something our team is working on. Also the issue of chondria tum tumulosa, which is um, a possible um, invasive algae that's over in the Northwestern Hawaiian Islands. So it's not on the main Hawaiian Islands yet. Um, so that's something um, that's trying to be prevented. Okay, yeah, those are those are really good things to know about. Um, mahalo, Sarah. Appreciate appreciate your mana and everything. Um, and Kaya Nui, hey. So, aloha. aloha. Starting off, um, introduce yourself, name, age, where you work favorite native plant animal, and fun fact. Uh, aloha again. My name is Kai Anui Andaya. Um, I'm 31. I work at, I'm the field crew leader for the plant crew at Big Island Invasive Species Committee, or BISC. Um, favorite native plant or animal, like everybody, that's so hard. Uh, probably um, tiger shark, Niohi is my favorite. Um, and then something was the last part of the question. Fun fact, fun fact. Yourself. um, it's not super fun, but a fact. Um, I'm a, I'm gonna be uniquing soon next year into Kumuhula, so oh, yay, nice. yay, yeah, that's like, a fun fact. My next winter solstice, yeah, it's a lot, so it's pretty much a doctorate, it's almost, yeah, it's like stressful. Talk about burnout, Ooh. for sure, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's real. Cool. Um, so why and how did you get into conservation and what do you like about it? So kind of like um, Hoku, um, I went to Hawaiian Immersion from kindergarten to 12th grade, even some college at Kahakuula at UH Hilo. Um, and my family too, we've been raised and immersed in Hawaiian culture. And so it was always an innate feeling to be a part of the environment and environmental kinship and stuff like that. Uh, what else? Also, hula. Oh, I think you froze a little bit there. Um, so you said said hula and sorry, we lost. Yeah, hula you. plays a big part in why I am still in conservation. Kind of helped me a lot through college. Um, I look at a lot of chants and I could see like different scientific processes and I could link it. Like that helped me a lot in college, which is surprising. Like gotta make that connection somehow that connection mm -hmm. um but yeah and my hula style or the tradition that I come from we practice hula kuahu which is like altar hula and kuahu is basically um, a microcosm 
in the halal space of the larger environment. So what we do is we bring in different plants that mean different things, symbolize different stuff and what you want to bring into the halal space. And so, yeah. Cool, cool. Um, what I guess, what do you like about it? If, I know you're kind of like into all that stuff. So, but it's like being outside. <laughs> so being yeah. outside is fine. <laughs> Um, I don't know if you could tell, but sometimes I have a hard time uh, speaking publicly. Oh, no, you're fine. You're, you're doing <laughs> great. No worries. <laughs> I'd rather just speak to the plants while I'm out there. Yeah, and there's no <laughs> pressure for them, right? They're not going to talk back, so. <laughs> no, yeah. Sometimes they do. Like, the Olafa, they flap. I'm just like, right. yeah, he's not going <laughs> to. Sassy. But, yeah, they're sassy plants. They're the only ones that are just so animated. But anyway. <laughs> Yeah. For sure. Um, so what what are some of the things that you found more difficult and, and drawbacks of conservation? Um for my job, sometimes we go into uh properties like private property or people's property and not public areas and stuff. But the private properties are difficult because sometimes there's an invasive plant there that, that's on our list, our target plant, and those people sometimes don't want us don't like reply to our letters or anything and we have mm -hmm. a hard time getting that plan out and sometimes like croto like devil weed mm -hmm. so there's some properties that like they produce like thousands of seeds like it's crazy and they're a keen seed so they just fly in the wind and they stick to your clothes and your hat and your beard you know so it's like really hard to get people to care about like hey we're doing this for free we could do it like we could just hand pull it. We don't need to use herbicide. Like we got you, just let us know, but we really want to remove this plant. So like stuff like that. Yeah, I think that's one of the most difficult parts for our job, for my job. Yeah, for sure. No, I mean, I can totally see how it'd be difficult dealing with like private landowners who are like, ah, oh, we don't want you on our space. And yeah, it's hard to get people to understand that you're just trying to help, you know, you're not like, trying to get all up in their space but oh also like the area we cover so there's only one plant crew for the big island and the big island is the big island <laughs> right. so we gotta trek and travel far helicopter places i don't like flying in helicopters they're scary <laughs> and yeah but we do what we gotta do <laughs> yeah for sure you know it's funny i feel like people are one way or the other with helicopters they either like love it or they're like i hate this get me off right now so <laughs> <laughs> definitely a mixed bag but um yeah fear of heights i'm sure is uh that's hard if you if you want to work as a field worker <laughs> um okay cool so what what do you think some of the biggest challenges are for conservation in hawaii um what do you think some of the solutions to those could be um since well yeah it's one thing or if yeah something that it's like a challenge is um like import importing things or like just movement of stuff that's like one of the big things like i try to decontaminate my truck as much as i can like my personal vehicle you know before i go holo holo and go trek around with whoever but that's one thing like for our job we um part of it is like the heavy machines that go up the mountain and stuff they got to be checked and if there's any dirt, any seeds, any anything like that, the, we got to turn them around and be like, you cannot go out because you're going to mm -hmm. take something up there possibly. Yeah. And the solution is just checking, but that's hard because there's not that much entities out there that do that or we kind of catch everything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You guys are a small crew, so it's like you can't look at it. every single vehicle and every single wheel well and right. every single plants food. that get imported. Yeah, like you can't look at yeah. every single soil and stuff. It's so hard. Yeah. Yeah. Do you have like any other ideas about what some of the solutions could be other than just, I guess, people being vigilant in their own kind of, you know, spaces or? Mm. No. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard thing to answer. I think, you know, it, from my perspective, I think that legislation could help with some of the stuff. Cause some of oh, the yeah, things definitely. Things. Yeah, I was talking to my friends about that, actually. Yeah, that's something that can, that could help out. Yeah, we need the, like, those higher-ups to, like, look at it and be like, hey, you know, 
like there's stuff happening and like sometimes it's not until like fire ants are in in their house and that's when they care you know yeah not until right. it's like affecting them personally they're like we gotta get these out right when they're in your bed yeah <laughs> then that's a problem <laughs> for sure um so uh last question so how can managers teachers mentors help youth who are becoming involved in conservation uh how can they help spark interest and um how can they support young people in conservation mm, um how to spark interest I, um at one point in time I was a Hawaiian studies teacher at a school here. And what I did is I brought a bunch of plants from the area from Mountain View into the classroom because I wanted the kids to get connected with, you know, their, their family that's around them, the plants and then the animals, but mostly the plants. So I'd bring plants mm -hmm. in and I would like explain to them like, cause like the, um, what is that? Like how special they are to me. And why I think they're special, like they're kind of like Pokemon to me. They have like special abilities. They can do all <laughs> easy stuff. And it's like, wow. So that's one thing I tried to do and which really worked well, actually. A lot of the kids that stuck to them, that like resonated with them. And they really liked that. So that's one thing that could start Spark. Um, what else? Just for like yeah, basically, support. You know, like if you're like a field, you're a field crew leader, right? So you got to support yeah. your, your, your workers, your young people who are under you. Yeah, that too, like basically explaining to them why things are important, like why doing what we do is important because nobody else is going to do it. That's one big thing. But, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think what else? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe like making, because once like you like tell people like why it's important and you make that connection with them, most likely they're going to care about those things more and want to take care of it so that they could use those resources in the future. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. I, I, wanna, I want the birds to be saved because I want to be able to pluck feathers sustainably and make lehu, mm -hmm. you know, or occasionally eat a nene for Thanksgiving yeah. <laughs> in the far future, hopefully right but that's how we got to care about it like we got to care about like oh i want to incorporate it to my life and culturally too mm -hmm. and that way yeah people will make a better push to be yeah we got to save these resources so we can use right. them right right yeah so that they're not endangered anymore so exactly. can't be like a part of regular life and not uh just something that needs to be you know protected with with everything we got cool Cool. Well, um, thank you, Kai Nui. Um, mahalo. Mahalo Nui Lo. Um, so let's see. So we do have a couple questions in the Q&A, it looks like. Hmm. Okay, this is an interesting one. I'm not, can you guys see the Q&A too? Or is it just me? It might be just me. Okay, so um, what makes a species invasive? Anybody got a good answer for that? Sure, I guess I'll go. Um, what makes an inv um, a species invasive? That's if, let's say like, that's if that species that's coming to, like let's say Hawaii, that comes to Hawaii, where it's taking resources and outplacing um, native or endemic, um, flora and fauna stuff like that yeah that's cool. pretty much an easy way to say that yeah that's a good answer did anyone else have a answer for that or want to go yeah i was just gonna say basically the same thing um species that are out competing and like overtaking our endemic flora and fauna so yeah same thing okay cool um so i have a question for you and uh, it says, great perspective on the need for local people to get birding experience. Have you been able to get any experience handling or banding rare or more common honey creepers? Have you seen the ki uh, kiwi that made his way from Nakula back to his original home range? Yeah, thanks for that question. Um, 
yeah, fortunately, my supervisor that I begged for my job um, from, uh, she's given me a lot of opportunities to get more bird handling experience. And she's just let me kind of take any opportunity that's been presented, like, on a wide range. Um, so I have handled um, all of, like, the common honey creepers, which is a blessing. Um, but I am not allowed to handle the endangered um, the endangered honey creepers, which I understand, but that's where my frustration kind of comes in seeing people who aren't from here, um, not even necessarily that they're not Hawaiian, but just people who haven't even grown up in Hawaii um, are these people that are handling these really, really important and like valuable birds to our culture. Like they're literally our ancestors. I think that people should treat them like royalty. And so it's hard to, to, like be around that but anyway I yes I have given a lot I have been given lots of opportunities to to handle in the short time that I've had my internship um and unfortunately I was not on that trip that um where they they found that QVQ crossed that distance um but my coworkers did see that and it is pretty fascinating and and inspirational for honey creepers on Maui cool cool yeah, mahalo. Um, so next question, how do you guys cope with burnout? What are some of the ways you guys like to do stress? Anybody want to share? I'll go because <laughs> I brought that up. Um, I think uh, it's the first step is um, like setting boundaries. I think pe all the people I've worked with care so much for the species and the aina they care for um and I think just recognizing that the fact you are caring is enough and at the end of the day it's okay to stop thinking about work and just enjoy your personal life your family uh, for me I love going to the beach and just nap <laughs> and um, do things that are very different than work yeah so I'm usually inside or in the mountain so doing stuff in the ocean or at the beach is really helpful for me for sure yeah I feel that too I'm inside way more than I would like to be <laughs> but I love going to see you guys at the snail lab so Thanks for letting me come there. <laughs> um, and then let's see. Uh, anybody else want to answer the stress burnout question? Thinking. Poco kawale. Sorry. No, uh, you're fine. No, go for it. Yeah, I think definitely like the whole like nana ike kumu concept like returning to the source and like looking at at those resources that that are available to like find more inspiration to motivate you to continue what you're doing even though it might be tiring i think that's really fulfilling and rewarding um like i always am trying to like watch youtube videos about more things like just more hawaii conservation and like eke about hawaii and reading books and like going to the experts and like networking with them and asking them questions and stuff i think that that's a really great way but i also completely agree with you um in the fact that like sometimes it is okay to just decompress and like kind of not necessarily fully disconnect but like allow yourself to to just be so yeah for sure okay um question for everyone where do you see yourself in five years um i'll i'll just click through people i'll start out with uh sarah um yeah in five years i don't know like exactly like i don't have any specifics but i would hope to like climb up the work ladder and hopefully like you know, get um more leadership position and stuff like that and like just climb the work ladder. For sure. Okay, cool. Uh Hoko Akale. Yeah, I also agree. I hope to have have moved up um within my organization, if not 
gone to another one and and I'm succeeding within that. I definitely want to get a, a degree in biology and botany. Um, and I have other future professional goals, but in general, yeah, I just hope that I can make an impact to inspire more Hawaiian people to pursue careers in conservation. Cool, cool. My my personal um, bias is UH Hilo, but that's just because I went there. So <laughs> I think that's a great, they have great programs there. Um, let's see. Kaya Nui. Five years. Uh, I don't even know. Yeah, I don't really have like a plan. Plan. What would what you I hope? Would, I guess. I hope that I'm alive. <laughs> I hope so too. <laughs> I don't like kill myself at work. Yeah. That's why you gotta do that self care, yeah. Right. No, yeah, I gotta take some notes. Thank you. <laughs> but um, five years. I hopefully. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, I mean, do you I'm have any like <laughs> outside of outside of work goals or? Yeah, probably. I don't know hula. I don't know if I'm gonna start a halal or not. We'll okay, see. that's that's a cool one. Yeah, you yeah. yeah, Kumo starting a halal. Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna start like big scale or small. Like if I'm gonna have like a traditional class or if I'm just gonna teach like couple people. Yeah. Something. Yeah, for sure. But we'll yeah. see. Yeah. Awesome. Kumo Kayanui. <laughs> Yeah, we love to see it. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. Mahalo. Um, Genviev. Um, not a super set plan, but I guess what I'm hoping for. Um, we have a lot of undergraduate students going through our lab, helping us working as student workers and kupu interns, and I just look forward to seeing them in leadership position and being able to collaborate with them in this in five years. I think they'll be working full time in the field. So I'm excited to see the new generation and interact with them. And I hope that what I taught them, we taught them can help them. I want to see them grow. Yeah. So yeah. I'm excited yes. to see that. <laughs> yeah. So kind of just like, yeah, continuing on with your kind of mentorship yeah. manager role that you're kind of helping them find their own futures out there. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. Um, okay. This is an interesting one. Are there any native invasive species? Hmm. Uh, anybody want to answer this one? <laughs> um, I could answer it. at least. For my team, we define invasive as non-native and has some type of like harmful effect to like either ecosystem, human health. Um, yeah, so with that question, no, but there could be, they wouldn't be classified as native or invasive, but there have been like native, like for example, um native algae sometimes have like seasonal algal blooms that kind of take over but it, i don't think they would be considered like invasive yeah that's that's a good way um to answer that i i think yeah species can act kind of weedy sometimes or they can be a little bit more aggressive um in their nature but yeah by definition invasive and native are are opposites pretty much so um anybody else want to add to that no okay cool um i have a couple more random questions we got a couple more minutes um so how can the public help are there any good resources for the public to get involved just you know based on people's interest anybody have any I think um, we were uh, talking about this question in our lab and I think planting a native garden or um, as the public asking your local nurseries or store 
to have more na native plants can really create this connection to native plants and then your neighbors see your native garden. I think it just um, helps share the like the love for Aina and native. Yeah, so that's, that's like an easy way people from the public can help, I think. Yeah, awesome. Um, anybody else have any more thoughts about that? Opportunities to get involved? I think volunteering, my organization doesn't really have anything, but I know like Pai Pai Ohe'ia or like um, Malama Manalua, they do really good work um, on like cleaning up invasive algae and they do like hand picking. Um, so like volunteering at sites like that. Cool. Cool. Um, anybody else? Um, yeah, kind of similarly, I know like DLNR DOFA has their volunteer list. You can sign up and get emails about different volunteering opportunities and you get to go in some more or like less accessible natural area. Um, so that's a good way to get involved. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Uh, let's see. Anybody else have any thoughts about that? Yeah, I was just gonna say, like, researching, um, like the conservation organizations that are on your island and seeing the resources that are available within them whether that be just like informational or volunteer opportunities that's the best way but also just like having the conversations about it and like educating other people on the things that you know is like really what will help um in the end just having people know about things and like knowing their names and and why they're important um is all really valuable Oh, yeah, I think that's definitely, definitely good advice. Um, Kainui, you got any thoughts about it? Not to call you out. <laughs> um, yeah, so like, yeah, our, our BISC, we have a program where we, um, when we remove a target species in somebody's property, when we're able to replace it with something, it could be native or it could be something that's not invasive, like an ornamental. So that's also, that's a good like, program for people who still want a plant there. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, for them to replace. Cool, cool. Yeah. Um, this is one I kind of didn't mention that was, it says, I, I appreciate the mention of self-care in the face of such an overwhelming job. Um, and it said, can any of you talk about the ways you self-care or prevent burnout? But I feel like we kind of went over that one but figured I'd just mention it for the sake of mentioning it okay um so I think because we're towards the end of the webinar um we can send out that post webinar poll for you guys um mahalo nui loa for everyone for joining and really appreciate your guys's mana'o about conservation and youth and you know what we can do moving forward so um yeah, feel free to send out that poll, Jamie. And if you guys have any like closing thoughts or remarks, feel free to to say whatever you think. All right, the poll is launched. Um, it's super quick, just two questions. Um, so if uh, all the participants not panelists um could go ahead and fill that poll out um that would be very helpful for us thank you guys so much and thank you to all the panelists for sharing um it was very very wonderful listening to you guys today yeah and you guys all did great don't worry you have you have awesome public speaking skills skills see like it i can't even <laughs> i can't even talk <laughs> but we really appreciate you guys like taking time out of your day to come and share with us and teach people a little bit about what being in conservation is like I think I think it's good to hear directly from the people that are doing it so okay are we gonna how's how's the poll looking people all right good almost there almost got everybody okay. so we'll give it another 15 seconds maybe
and then when will this be recorded and uh and posted just for people want to share yeah um it will well so it's automatically recorded and um it shouldn't be too long before it's posted i'm not exactly sure um when they do that but i would estimate about a week or so okay okay cool uh, well i will obviously send it out to all the panelists in case you want to share with family and friends anybody but um yeah mahalo nui to everyone and and um hope you guys have a great rest of your day thank you, thank you guys thank you bye bye mahalo, mahalo.